Hello and welcome back to the Deborah Peters Show. So happy to have you join me. This is the last two days of the month, of the year and of the decade. And so I thought I would just reach out and say how much I appreciate having you be a part of my business and my world for the last year. It's been a phenomenal year. And I want to thank all of you for subscribing to my YouTube channel. We just hit 371,000 subscribers, if you can believe it. It's still not sunk in. I'm still going, pinching myself. And so this whole next year, I have an amazing rollout of content for you. I'm going to break the year down into quarters. So for all of you that are dealing with business growth and expansion and goal achievement and just living a happier, fulfilled life, I'll break it down into quarters for you so it's easy for you to stay on top of and really start to see some significant growth and some significant change. So that's what's headed up for 2020, but I don't want to you know, jump past the significance of this next two final days. So let's talk a little bit about what you can do to really make the most of these two days, rather than have it be something that you just get past so you can get on with New Year's Eve or New Year's Day celebration, whatever it is that you do in your family or your culture, but to really make these next two days impactful, powerful, inspiring and something that stirs up a an insightful moment or feeling or an epiphany or two or three that actually enable you to see the future for yourself and the immense and infinite possibilities that lie before you so that you take that energy into this next year and this next decade. You know, new month, new year, new decade. How does it get better than that, right? <laughs> Amazing. So the next two days, um, and just bear with me because I've made a ton of notes and I've done it in bullet form. So I, I can remember to, to, ex to express everything that I, I had. I always sit down and do a meditation before I record these and so I had just like a whack of information come through and I was furiously writing down all these bullets and so I brought them with me <laughs> so um, bear with me for a second so you know first of all let me just preface this entire video message by saying that as you're building out whether you've already done it or whether you're doing it now as you're building out your goals and your objectives and the things you want to accomplish and experience in your life in 2020, just remember not to create so much structure that you block out the ease, the joy, the flow, and the energy coming through that could actually make things happen quicker and easier than if you were doing it yourself. Because, you know, I talk a lot about goals and yes, goals are very, very important. You want to have an understanding and a relationship, which I'm going to talk with you about this today. You want to have a relationship with your goals, but, and not but, but you know, it's, it's an easy word in the language, right? But most importantly is to really truly give these goals enough space to become themselves and so maybe what i need to do is go through the video and then we can come back to that point because you might be scratching your head going what's she talking about become themselves so most importantly i want to give you like my top six or seven steps to really close out this year in a powerful way with a lot of clarity and a solid intention for what you're creating for next year. Now, whenever you're creating something new, there's, there's going to be uncertainty. 
I want you to feel that uncertainty. I want you to feel the uncertainty with a sense of knowing that you've got this. Can't explain it, can't put your finger on it, but you know, you know in your heart that you've got this. It just, you don't know how. I want you to be in that space where you just don't know how. Like, I know I can do this. I know this is possible. Maybe you don't even know you can do it. You just have this feeling in your gut, you know, that it's possible. And you absolutely don't know how. So therein lies the uncertainty. I want you to get into this place where you feel really comfortable with uncertainty, because that's important. When you can feel uncomfortable with, or when you can feel comfortable with uncertainty, you have moved beyond a choke point where most people get blocked. So new beginnings, you know, from learning to walk, learning, you know, taking your first breath, learning to talk, all of these new things. You know, if a baby said, I don't know if I can um, figure out how to take my first breath when I'm birthed into this world, so therefore I'm not coming out, <laughs> it would be kind of ridiculous, right? I want you to think like that, that this is something that you could totally do, you just don't know how. And you've never seen it done before, so therefore you're going for it just for that very purpose, that it's never been done before because you have so much creativity in you that anything is possible. Now, with that said, having an, a spiritual awareness is really not even an option anymore. You must have a spiritual awareness to get through this life, for this life to have any sense of meaning. And we're seeing this has been coming through now for in a really solid, measurable way for like the last decade. I've seen huge movement in this area because I've been doing what I do for a living as a coach and, and a speaker and a, and, a, and, and a futurist that can kind of bring things into play in people's minds so they'll entertain it as a possibility. And once you can entertain something as a possibility, you can actually start pulling it together and bringing it into physical form. So this whole baseline of having to have the spiritual awareness is really the norm now. And because I remember back in the day when I would talk about it and people would just kind of roll their eyes. Like, I think they called it Pollyanna back then. We don't even hear those words leave people's lips anymore for the most part, for the most part. So having this spiritual awareness about you as you being you going through your life and running your business and having your relationships and whatnot is really the key to everything, okay? It's the key to everything. It's the key to happiness, it's the key to fulfillment, peace, you know, the ability to thrive in chaos, the, the awareness that uncertainty is a good thing, you know, this spiritual awareness is going to be the net that catches you, the foundation that supports you. So I really would encourage you to create that and cultivate that and foster that on a consistent basis. So what do you need to do to make that happen? First of all, take time daily to meditate. In one of my previous videos, I shared with you my daily and my weekly routine. And so my daily routine is to get up in the morning and to meditate before I turn on my phone, before I turn on my computer. I never engage with the outside world until I've had time to sit down and meditate for 15, 20 minutes. You know, it's, it's interesting because in the beginning it was like 10 minutes, like, oh my gosh, when's this gonna end? And then we're into 15 and now it's like, if I don't set an alarm, to, to bring me back into sort of like my body, my awareness, I could be there for 30, 40 minutes and not even realize that the time has passed. Because when you get into that space, it's like a connectedness that is so empowering and so blissful that time just kind of hangs, it just kind of stands still. So give yourself the gift 
of a morning meditation every day, no matter what, make it your number one priority. Number one priority. And I often go into meditation um, sort of asking for guidance. You know, I have, I have my whole year mapped out ahead of me. Well, it's actually I have the next 24 months mapped out ahead of me. Um, but it's not um, rigid structure like I was talking about in the beginning of the video. They, 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 it's, broad, it's broad strokes of certain things that I am actualizing and bringing to fruition. And so many of these things will be things I've never done before. And where's the information coming from to be able to do that? And so I'll ask for guidance. It's like, show me a sign. So go into your meditation, but then, you know, don't white knuckle it and insist that, you know, you didn't get a sign, therefore the meditation didn't work. Like, don't be like that, okay? Just don't be ridiculous. Just know that it's, it's a process. And that sign may not come during the meditation. In fact, it rarely does. For me, it kind of starts to flood in toward the end. And I'll have a notepad and a, piece, and a pen next to me. And as I'm coming out of the meditation, it's like all this information just like flows in. And I'm like writing like mad to get it all down. And then boom, there's like the solution to like five or six things that I am creating and actualizing that were, there was like little sticky points or hurdles, which I was having like, uh, you know, a head scratching moment trying to figure out how to get through. And so that's really important. All right, so assuming you're committed and you're meditating and you're committed to doing that every day, you can watch my other videos. I've got one on meditation. I'll put it in the, in the drop down here for you. Um, and I also want to mention to you that I have this like amazing class coming up I'm running at the end of January. It's the Mind Mastery Revenue Accelerator Masterclass. And I'm rolling out some really high level neuroscience and mindset tools and connecting them to increasing revenue in your life and your business. So you're gonna to wanna to jump on that and I'll put the link below too. And then in March, I'm running a live two day boot camp in Los Angeles. And it's the Business Accelerator Bootcamp. So I'm gonna put the link to my Business Accelerator assessment. It's about a seven minute long assessment. It's a great thought provoker. And if you're kind of, you know, trying to figure out where you're going with uh, 2020, it'll inspire some really good thought on what it takes to get your business to scale and get it to the next level. Okay, so, what I would like you to do with that meditation is you're gonna set intentions and you're going to get into alignment with those intentions from a kinesthetic place. So from a place of feeling, you wanna feel what it's like to be that, all right? And you can check out some of my other videos and there's more detail on that, like the meditation and the energy pull and whatnot. So here's how I'd like you to spend some of this day and think about all of the amazing experiences that you had in 2019, including the ones that kicked your ass and completely upset your apple cart because you learned something about you in that process. You deepened your relationship with you, whether it was self-love, um, compassion for yourself, a more gentle self-talk, a faith in your ability to move past um, a challenge or a hardship or a breakup or you know whatever experiences that you conjured up for yourself. And then I would like you to list that out and go into a place of appreciation and go into a place of gratitude. All right, because that's where your power is. No victim stuff. 
don't blame anybody for anything, even if other people are involved, which they usually are. Um, don't blame anybody for anything. You know, that person was a blessing. I figure every time I have an experience with someone that if I were to judge it is, is negative or created some kind of problem or it was a difficult uh, experience and that person on, on the outside, it looks like that person caused it. I always find that there's massive blessing in that. And, you know, essentially that person is just a, an actor on your stage. And you're the writer and you're the executive producer of the play. So thank them. You don't have to call them up and say thank you for being a jerk, you know, but you can thank them their, their higher self. Like you can thank them on a spiritual level. All right. So wrapping this up. Number one, cultivate relationships with the following. And this is in no particular order. And this is not a hierarchy. So just, you know, play with it. It's malleable, make it yours. Add whatever you want to the list. If there's anything that I overlooked that you would like to add, then please do. And put a comment below. I'd love to hear what it was that you actually considered and are going to now get into an uh, exercise on today and set the tone for the rest of your future with this exercise, all right? So cultivate a relationship with yourself. Number one, number one, number one. Now, most people have a tendency to be really focused on the relationship they have with their spouse, their parents, their children, their community, their their church, etc. I would like to encourage you to really cultivate a solid, loving, unconditionally loving relationship with yourself. All right. Really important. Number 2, your goals. Create a relationship with your goals. I can tell you that I have written down goals in the past <laughs> that I didn't have a relationship with. My ego did, my ego did, because my ego thought if I had that, I'd look better, be more accepted, fit in, whatever, I don't know, like ego stuff. So create a relationship with your goals that have meaning and that have value and create a spiritual relationship with those goals. So how would achieving that goal make you a better you? And I don't mean the actual, okay, here's the physical goal. I'm, I'm a better me now for it. I'm talking about the journey to actualizing that goal, to creating that goal, to allowing the magnificence of the enormity of that goal in your life, how would that make you a better you? All right. Your body, please, ladies and gentlemen, get fit, get fit, get healthy, choose to be healthy. Take a really good look at how you're treating your body and change up anything that is a deficit and get rid of anything that is a negative. All right. So I would like to see you exercising every single day. Now, sometimes I don't, I don't exercise every single day. I typically do four in a row and then I take a day off and then I do another one. So five days a week, I'm exercising and I'm doing it in such a way that it's really challenging. I got to dig deep. All right. And whatever that is for you, you know, don't measure yourself to me and don't measure yourself to somebody else, but do what would cause you to really dig deep and have to pull out that next level of energy that you haven't tapped into in a very long time 
and connect to it. Connect to the deep breathing. Connect to the, oh my God, I don't think I can do another step. Yeah, I just did another step. Okay, connect to that. That's, that's the key. And do something about your food intake. So cut out all the processed food. Look, I'm not a nutritionist and this is not nutritional advice. And I, I, I used to own a gym, but I'm no longer a certified trainer. So check with your doctor and do all of that. And then clean up your inner and outer environment. So clean up the food you eat, you know, lay off the soda, cut back on the booze, <laughs> you know, get off the carbs and don't buy any more processed food and learn to cook, you know, teach yourself, give yourself the time. It's, I find that it's like really kind of therapeutic to buy the food. You know, when I go to the store and it's like, okay, I'm going to make this, this, and this. So I need these ingredients and I go home and I do meal prep. It's cool. It's good for your soul. Like it really is a way of self nurturing that you may not have done in a long time, especially if you're in a relationship where somebody does all the cooking for you, or if you're single and you eat out in restaurants all the time, cut that out. The only time I go to a restaurant is if I'm going to meet a client and then I'm really picky about where we meet and what I choose off the menu. All right. Then get into a relationship with your business. Start talking to your business. Ask your business where it wants to grow and it will guide you. It will show you when you form a company, it, you know, we all know that by incorporating, it becomes its own entity. Well, it's, it's more than that. It, it's its own energy. So start talking to it, you know, ask your business, like, which direction do you want to go? I can tell you over the years as a coach and as a speaker that there were times where I looked around the industry at what other speakers were doing with their speaking business and I tried to go that direction because that was the trend but then it didn't feel right and it didn't work and it didn't work and then I did the same thing with coaching and I'm not going to get into the details but I can tell you that after the financial crash kind of hit in 2008, the whole bottom fell out of the speaking business. Like nobody was paying speakers. They were just lucky to keep the doors open for a while. So the whole speaking industry changed as did the coaching industry. And one thing that I've self-taught that I now teach all my clients is really learn to talk to your business tap into your business and see where it would like to grow because there's a there's a organic energetic aspect to your business that will grow in a way that others in your industry haven't thought of yet and then you'll you'll be the trendsetter and then they'll be following you, trying to duplicate what you have created in terms of your success. And you know, it can be, it can be duplicated, but it, it can't be completely owned up because you're you. And it doesn't matter what size company you have. If you have a small business or, or if you have a mid-sized company or whatever, it doesn't matter. These, these rules still apply. All right, then, Create a relationship with your self-talk. Get on top of yourself. Become an observer of how you're talking to yourself. I catch myself saying negative things to myself sometimes and I'm just like, whoa, where's that coming from? And today, you know, I was kind of just like putzing around my home and and because I'm recording this on Sunday and I was doing some things around home and writing some things out and I found myself having this crazy thought that was super negative and I'm like, where is this coming from? But the key is, is I caught myself 
And so this is what I'd like you to do is just create a really good relationship with your self-talk. So you'll never talk bad to yourself and you can actually say nice things. I, I read something recently that, you know, we talk about thoughts or things all the time, etc. And I read something recently that the words we use cast spells in our lives, meaning spelling a word, using a word, speaking a word into your reality creates your reality. So just create a relationship with your self-talk so that you have an, an internal radar on how you're speaking to yourself and, and then just reframe, just reframe and make a choice, make a conscious decision to be nice to yourself. Create a relationship with your energy. The energy you're putting out is everything. Now, the quality of your self-talk can have a direct impact on your energy, absolutely. And, and just, you know, stay aware. I think this is really what I'm trying to say to you is just cultivate self-awareness and stay aware. So when you're headed out to a meeting, see that meeting, feel that meeting, tune into the energy of the person or the people that you're meeting with in advance, connect your own energy to make sure you're, you're connected to you, not, not the outside world. You know, first of all, alignment, then the outside world aligns to you. And be mindful, be mindful of that when you head out the door, that you're not just like throwing yourself into it mindlessly while you're looking at your phone and responding to somebody else. Just kind of slow down a step or two and get into an alignment with that moment, with that energy, with, with you first, and then step into the meeting or step into the negotiation or step into the email or step into the phone call. All right. Or step into your body when you're going to the gym. Same thing. And um, the words you speak to and over others. Whoa, I'll tell you, this is something I've really been working on. So, you know, we all get, we all get angry at situations or other people and we have a tendency, it's a human, it's human nature, okay? It's just the way we've been wired. Doesn't mean you have to stay wired that way. So one of the things that I have been working on is when I think of someone who has wronged me or hurt me or done something that was untoward, I now speak kindness over them where I speak a blessing over them. And wow, it has totally set me free. Like I just feel so much better. And you know what? The digestive issues that I had, the headaches that I had, like gone, gone. So it can be challenging, <laughs> especially if they've done some really vile or hideous thing, but Look, at the end of the day, imagine how vile and hideous they are to themselves in their, in their self-talk to actually treat another person that way. So you just gotta, you know, compassion for them. <laughs> just do your best. Um, and then of course your relationships. So get the relationship of your relationships straight first before you jump in. And then, you know, I, I did like 10 years of couples coaching and this was the number one tool that I taught couples. Before you try to fix this relationship between each other, get into alignment with you and sort out the relationship you have with yourself. And then you'll be less apt to think that this other person is this problem that needs fixing. I can't even tell you how many wives have wanted me to fix their husbands and how many husbands have wanted me to fix their wives. And 
it's just ridiculous because that's a black hole that is endless. There's no such thing anyway. There's nothing wrong with anybody, so there's nothing to fix. So when you get right with you, when you fall in love with you, when you have compassion for you, when you decide not to be a victim and to realize that you create your own reality, then you step out of the whole minutia of what we call life on this planet and you raise yourself up and above into a space where you realize that all you have to do is go inside, shift your perception and get into alignment with you and then visualize and feel the outcomes you would like and start living your life from that solid place of pure intention. So, I was a long one. I've got one more message for you tomorrow. A little bit of a continuation on the subject to wrap up the 31st of December, 2019. And I look forward to seeing you then. So, oh my gosh, God bless you for subscribing to my channel and sharing and liking, giving me a thumbs up and uh, commenting what would you what would you take away from this i'd love to know that so have a blessed day and i will see you tomorrow this is deborah peters bye ciao